has been a minute. That's how I'm going to start this. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, I have not done one of these in a long time. Um, understandably so. I planned on doing an update like this once after every semester of my program and I have not done one for the end of my first year spring semester because the end of my first year spring semester coincided with a global pandemic. And I think that's a pretty good reason of why I've been MIA for a while. So here's what I've been up to. They're like, nice. What dentist you do? He's an orthodontist. Zoom. Went hiking with my roommates. <laughs> Zoom again. Not again. More hiking. And more hiking. Also, when the gyms closed, I had to start taking a break. I took a lot of baths. Went back home. Pack it out. What was it? Ferret. 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 And then I went hiking, hiking, and more hiking, and I also went hiking. I just wanted to document this feeling because today has been one of the hardest days this semester. I tried to complete an assignment that I had no idea what was going on and I am just burnt fuck out. Like literally look at this shit you guys. I have been working on R. Oh, where's my cursor? There it is. For like six hours today and there's a point in it somewhere where I'm actually like what do I do? Well, what I actually did was pull up Stata because I actually know how to do this. So I am doing something else that I actually am capable at so I can feel something. A good time to procrastinate and show you guys my setup. Um, it's nothing special, literally, but um, I just have a dual monitor set up. I got some, I got some books, some required textbooks that were uh, for last semester. I have my little light um, and then some peaceful things on the side. This, like singing tibetan singing bowl um is meditative to a point but um yeah this is my setup okay back to what i was saying so i guess i will start like just kind of recounting everything that has happened in mid-march when it was spring break everything shut down i guess that would be the terminology um at first it was like ooh, two weeks of um getting ahead on work that I could be doing and finishing my projects and doing research, doing your master's, yay, sounds good, great break. Obviously that has not been the case. To put it plainly and lightly, there have been a lot of struggles since then. Um, I am going to plug IU Sociology's um, quarantine project, so go ahead and go to this link to see all the amazing work and content that IU Socio Sociology students um, put together as a, as a way to document everything. So I'm going to be frank and I'm going to be super honest. I was not okay and I'm not sure if I have recovered since then. The start of the pandemic and for the rest of that spring semester and the summer I went through a lot of really personal and professional changes and realizations. When things transitioned to be online, I 
was really anxious about all of it. I'm a very tactile person. Being in different spaces is how I get my work done. It's how I am productive. I don't like working where I spend my personal time. So when everything was relegated to um, being in the confines of my room and staying at my desk and taking all my classes at the same spot, I was not okay with it for a long time. I think as time went on, you kind of were forced to be okay with it. Um, in quotes, our new normal, which I did not have a strong end to my spring semester. Um, some of my classes and my courses were um, had instructors that were very kind about kind of ending it just there. Some kind of went on as normal and um, still required our final projects and all of these different things. That itself was a struggle of just trying to finish course work as just like an objective thing that we need to check off the list is just finish the coursework. So I did all that. End of my first semester, we had to um, submit a master's proposal a master's proposal within itself is a really hard thing to put together and to conceptualize, let alone being distant from other people and being distant from your advisors and um, other colleagues that could give you helpful tips in order to create, to create like your like a good master's proposal. So that was hard in itself. But also, there was really no break um, after spring semester ended. We essentially had to go into our summer work. So Indiana University's sociology program has a has a unique thing called the sociological research practicum in which we do six weeks of work for a professor's project at that year. So for my summer we had to go we had a weekend and then went straight into to the work. It was nice to at least have people to see on the weekdays and to talk about something other than what was going on to do actual work and keep myself busy and all that but i think a lot of what i struggled with over um over the past 10 months i went through a breakup in march right when everything was starting i was with this person for four and a half years we were doing a long distance and it just didn't work out. I think with any breakup, it's especially with long-term relationships, it's a real struggle to try to to attempt to disentangle yourself from the person that you were with for so long. I kind of had to do it isolated on my own, and um, that was that took a real shot at my mental health for sure where both parties felt like it was already coming to an end slowly so that we just thought it would be best for both of us to grow in our own different directions apart but that still took a huge toll on me being so far away from home i'm from the west coast my support system largely had to be people that i've known for a few months that was really hard during the lockdown and during all of this i did a lot of driving. I got in my car midnights and would just drive around Bloomington just to get out of the house and just to try to feel a semblance of movement varying my space. And I would think a lot in my car and I would stare up um, into the stars and just listen to music and just try to just like vibe by myself in like an empty parking lot. I would do that a lot. And then so summer went by so quick as most of you probably felt the same way summer just flew by and then all of a sudden fall 2020 semester was here and needed to start and i was like oh my goodness i have done nothing with my masters i haven't even touched it since i submitted it i have done nothing and therefore all of these mental thoughts not being good enough essentially just crashed down on me number one i struggled with imposter syndrome so much i don't know i just felt like i like i wasn't good enough to be in this program and i wasn't progressing i had plans to finish my masters over summer which were asterisk and very ambitious but i had plans to finish my masters over summer i felt not good enough for what i was doing 
it's a lot easier like when classes are in session when you're like passing by your classmates and passing by professors to talk about struggles here and there but i think because everything was online and after you were done with classes you just kind of clicked like end meeting there were no opportunities to catch your professor on the way out or talk to your friends right after class and say like hey i'm kind of struggling so that was very isolating and in that sense i think everything transitioning to online made my imposter syndrome even worse like it spiraled out of control because i just wasn't getting as much face time with people i remember there was one moment where i was really really struggling and i called my then boyfriend and was like i am going to quit because I cannot do this, I'm not good enough, no one thinks I'm good enough, like, no one's gonna help me with anything that I'm doing. And I remember he was like, breathe. Just breathe and reach out to people that are on your team. Reach out to your advisor, reach out to your mentor, reach out to people that you trust and say, I need help. Because I did. And so as I was crying, I was like sobbing on the phone, I started emailing my advisor, my mentor, people that were on my team, um, older grad students that I needed uh, help from. I started texting and emailing and I was like, can we set up meetings? I need help, I need help, I need help. And um, long story short, that made everything a lot, a lot better, but made everything a lot more manageable. I got, I, I got to actually talk through my plans for my master's and I got some really good feedback about, yes, this is very feasible, this is doable, you can do this. Um, you're capable of doing this, this is good enough, and it's interesting enough, and just do it. Get it done. Um, I think when you are experiencing imposter syndrome, to number one, talk to people about it. Just to at least, like, know that you're not alone, but also they can kind of reassure you that you are on the right track and you are still capable of doing a lot of this stuff. I think most of the time I was getting in my head and staying in my head too much that I just needed, like, external validation that things were um, going the right way and that's okay to to want or need external validation at certain moments i mean i think that we shouldn't fully depend on everyone telling us that we're smart or that we're doing the right thing when you're struggling you kind of need a little bit of that so um that's what i learned also just being first gen coming from a background where like my family is not at all in the academic world wasn't really exposed to a lot of these strategies and things that I needed to be doing, i.e. asking for help when I needed it. So I had to hit rock bottom before I figured out that that's really the way to go. I don't know if imposter syndrome ever goes away, but anyway, I am still trying to figure it all out. To speak to the issue of like not feeling successful in a program, I honestly think the cure to that is to find your squad and squad up. I think it's so easy to get into your head and start comparing yourself to other people's trajectories and their paths and also compete with other people that are in the same timeline as you. Everyone's journeys are different, so treat them as different. You just need to make sure that you surround yourself with people who are really invested in your success and truly like truly invested in your success not like i'm only invested in your success when i'm doing better than you no you need to find people that cheer you on and they cheer with you and they're also with you when you fail when you get rejected find a true squad and squad up so i just wanted to share some of the things that i'm doing now because we got to end this on a positive note. I applied for the National Science Foundation GRFP Fellowship um, and we'll hear back at April 2021, so crossing my fingers. I've gotten a lot of progress on my master's really with conceptualizing it, what it is. I think I'll be on track with finishing the master's um, by the end of my second year, probably my second year summer, if not a little bit of trickling into the, thir the third year first semester, but you know, that's that's just how it is. Also, I got published. So um, after years of rejection from journals, I think I had we had four rejections, but finally one journal said, uh, gave us a revise and resubmit. We revised and resubmitted and uh, we finally got accepted. So that is forthcoming. And I'm very excited that my undergrad thesis has been reworked into an actual 
journal article piece that will contribute to the broader range of research on um, social movement participation, Black Lives Matter participation. I'm very excited um, and I will um, link it down there. Depending on when it comes out, I'll probably link it down there. And yeah, I feel like I'm getting the hang of grad school a lot more. I'm finding it easier to like weave theory into literature reviews and use theory to address my specific research question and use the methodologies to do so. Um, I will say that I have been more excited about to sit I have been more excited about statistics this semester than I have in my first year and I so I really think I was already planning on it but now it's like more of like I will do it I, th I think I'm going to um, get my second master's in applied statistics and that will be a really good training slash certification for quantitative methodology which is something that I was really interested in to begin with so that's kind of what I've been up to I just wanted to document like the very basic struggles that I have encountered since March um, since the pandemic and also trying to finish my first year of grad school slash start my second year of grad school it's hard but um, I'm still breathing I'm still alive I'm still here above all I think um, my general unsolicited advice is to just really take care of yourself again squad up find people that you can lean on and find people that will support you because you cannot do grad school alone life happens during grad school too and don't forget to call your family and tell them you love them and stuff like that thank you for watching and if you guys have any questions let me know um i will hopefully be more consistent in updating and uploading vlogs about my journey because I feel like 10 months since the last video that I posted is like way too long. Take care of yourselves. It is midnight and I cannot sleep. <laughs>